Hi, it's Steve and Joe from Fresh Agenda. And Steve, this week we've got a bit of a wrap up of the, the latest GDT results, which were pretty positive. They were. Um, first time since the start of the year we've had a good result, a positive result. Since pre-COVID times. Mm. Uh, as you can see there, across the board, um, pretty even until we get the cheddar and mm. it goes bizarre, like always. Yep. And, uh, yeah, those events this year. So this is one of the rare positive ones uh, that we've had. Mm. Um, so looking below the hood uh, again, the most, you know, we just try to pull out here some of the interesting bits. Um, Holmick powder strong early um, and then convert. So it's, it's really lifted in those early periods. So some short-term cover going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've also done here is just that's just the regular result. So we've stripped out the, the instantized effect which has kind of come back to normal. You can see the chart below showing in recent events we've had this high premium for instant product, sure. which has distorted the overall averages which get reported as headlines. So that's come back to much more normal. So there was some obviously some short-term uh, urgency there to get that product. Mm -hmm. Presumably that was in you know, impacted by disruptions, yeah. um, access to fluid milk, etc. Um, this event, strong in demand, mm. uh, a... You know, one of the higher end, I think we had this last event, um, same sort of trend. Um, but you can see the uh, both big buying regions picked up uh, from the previous event as well. So yeah. China and Southeast Asia yeah. buying more. So good solid result, mm -hmm. firming well. Um, we go across to skim milk powder and while the curb looks a little yuck, I mean, it's trending downwards. It has lifted consistently across the board. Uh, and then we've we get to this interesting situation where skim milk powder, while it's uh, it, it is lifting, we see these converging lines uh, between different regions. Mm. So this all there'll be a lot of speculation about where skim goes here. I, I think EU will probably drive that in the EU. That's an EEX line there, which is doesn't have a lot of trade on it. But, no, uh, it's expected Europe would continue to firm. Um, milk is slowing down. Uh, and cheese demand seems to be holding together. So that may keep more milk away from dryers. Mm -hmm. um, exports are still strong, uh, and so that, that should see the tail of those prices continue to lift, and that's that, um, the important uh, premium earned by New Zealand milk uh, should continue. Mm. And speaking of that, this is how it has performed. Mm. Um, and it jumped again this time after yep. a bit of a glitch last event where it was almost on par with um, European product. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the European and US prices actually fall yep. and New Zealand product jumped. So that premium comes back into play. It sure did. Mm. And it's and it's again back up to where it has been for most of this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's probably a highlight. And uh, as we move across the category to fats, uh, not so good. Um a weak uh, outlook for butter there. Mm. Um, and you're diverging from European prices. So we, New Zealand has got the cheapest butter now. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just weak demand. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, whereas in Europe, it seems domestic demand is probably keeping keeping that market firm. Yeah, a bit steadier. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of substitution going on for those developing regions. Yeah, certainly. And then cheddar, which is always a, a lottery when you come to GDT because prices just jump all over the place. But yep. the, the forward curve there is interesting as it converges out there to the right between, you know, where the U US futures market is pointing, um, which is also where the EU product is being priced yeah. at the moment. So that convergence, I think we talked about this a couple of videos ago, is, is still an interesting point when the export season comes back and we start to look for um you know where those sh market share tussles occur in um some of the important asian regions that's you know that's yeah. the uh, important number so, so when the Asia mm. export season comes back comes that's back. exactly right yeah where does it wind up because it's very important particularly for australian prices yeah the cheese situation speaking of australia you pulled out this really interesting little development here joanne well, it was, it was a little bit back to the future for me, Steve, because uh, many, many years ago um, in the dairy industry, I used to work on um, the the um, domestic market support schemes and various um, regulations to do with the dairy industry. And now we've got a, a proposal from the peak uh, industry body here in Australia for an increase in um, 
retail milk price to a dollar fifty a litre, and we've just got a little comparison over there. There's a bit of press around the comparison to New Zealand, um, but you look across to other um, countries. Yeah. Uh, that's quite a strong price for retail milk. Um, so, in, so in that chart, that's what it would be lifted to. Yes, that's right. What is a consumer levy? Yes. So that's a, a transfer from consumers um, to farmers. Um, not a lot of detail on how it would actually work in, mm. in practice because uh, if we roll forward, you know, you raise $225 million, about 2.6 cents a litre. How does that get shared? Because the exposure to that drinking milk market is very uneven across Australia, isn't mm. it, Steve? Mm. So uh, we're, we're Queensland, more than 100%, in fact, of their milk production so uh, goes to drinking. Mm. They're in deficit. In Victoria, which uh, is the by far the largest producing region, it's very small. So, you know, it's still a, a little bit to run. I'm not sure any government is is all that um, keen to legislate an increase in staple food product prices at the current time, but interesting one to watch. For a single sector? For a single sector, yes. So you think there's little chance this will get up? I would be surprised, but, you know, maybe I'll get my old job back. But there's something wrong with this job, I wonder. <laughs> okay, I'll think about that one. Um, chart of the week, Joe. what have you got here? Oh, well, skipping across to the US, um, some interesting data coming out really quantifying the impacts of COVID-19 on some of these key sectors in in, um, in the US. And we've been talking about this for some time, but uh, we just saw in the last month a real crash, a m last month of data, which was April, a real crash in um domestic cheese disappearance. Mm. Uh, and you look across to the left-hand chart there, which is um, some Census Bureau data on food service outlet sales, and you can see why that's really happening. But there has been a little bit of a recovery in May mm. for, for those sales, just with economies opening um, in in uh, or different states opening yeah, in the US. Right in the US. So it'll be interesting rolling forward f for another month. Um, that probably tightens up a little bit with those commercial disappearance numbers recovering. And I suppose what's contained in those numbers on the left, mm. would, which strip, you know, we could strip out, but it's uh, it's not clear until they give us a bit more detail, but the quick service part of this mm. market is actually surging. Mm. So if we look at, and we don't have them here, obviously, but they are being reported that the same store sales for pizza and burger franchises are doing quite well um, and as as well as grocery. Yeah, and that's where a lot of cheese is consumed, isn't it, on yeah. pizzas and burgers on um, those QSR. So as, so as people are doing it tough, they're trading down from dining out. Well, there's not many places to dine out. <laughs> that, that is changing uh, and there'll be restrictions, but they're, they're trading down to a more cheese-friendly option. Yep. Um, spending less but buying more cheese, which is, which is helping – create that short-term surge we've seen in prices. Mm, just uh, in the last month or so. So the, the big question is, is it going to be maintained? Yeah. Well, it's um, it's certainly going to come back. It's, come, mm. it's it's what time period? And, you know, money says July is probably the time when it does come back to earth to a more reasoned uh, level. I, I think the right-hand side is interesting with, you know, we, we, we've talked about this, just how deep this um, impact on demand, overall demand, gets. Mm, when you look back at some other shocks. Yeah, yeah and, and it, um, you know, the uh, GFC was, was the one we've drawn comparisons with. This doesn't look like it's as bad. No. Yet. Mm. So that'll be, yeah, just how that plays out. That's, that's going to be quite interesting. One to watch. Okay, that's it for us. <clears throat> we'll uh, hopefully be back next week. Thanks yeah. for viewing and um, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.